this video we're going to review all the parts that um, aren't reviewed in other videos. So we're going to start with the neurons. I'm going to start with this image. Uh, this is part of the neuron. Oops, here you can see the whole thing, but I'm going to start up close here. Uh, these are the dendrites. These are the dendrites. This whole area is the cell body. Within the cell body you have the nucleus. You also have these things called neural fibrils, these proteins right here. This gives the neuron its unique shape. Okay, so F here, and you'll see they also go down the axon. And then we have nissel bodies, which basically is just rough endoplasmic reticulum. And that's just a special name they're given within neurons. So you see this round structure here. Those are nissel bodies. In some of the other neuron models, it looks more obvious. Just look for the ribosomes and then attach to that endoplasmic reticulum. Okay, let's go back here for a second. And so we just talked about the cell body. We talked about these extensions being the dendrites. Okay, these extensions being the dendrites. Um, these right here, what's E, these are the ends. These are the ends, the axon terminals of a previous neuron. So you don't see the other neuron that would be going on in this direction, but this is the axon terminal. And between this axon terminal and the um, dendrite or cell body is a synapse, is a gap where neurotransmitters will be released. So what you're seeing here are actually the axon terminals of previous of previous neurons and again there's a synapse there. So dendrite cell body we went through nucleus and neural fibrils and nissel bodies. Right in here is the axon hillock and if you remember from lecture this is where the we go from chemically gated channels to voltage gated channels. This long extension down in here is the axon. Okay, is the axon. Wrapped around the axon is myelin sheath. Myelin sheath is basically fatty tissue. If this was more accurate, this myelin sheath right in here would actually be white. Um, so when you're looking at white matter in the brain or in the spinal cord, it's because you're seeing the myelin sheath. So what you have is different cells that are wrapped around this long extension. If you're in the central nervous system, this is made of an oligodendrocyte. If you're in the peripheral nervous system, this is these are made of Schwann cells, and these are all glial cells or helper cells. Here you can see the nucleus. You can see the nucleus of that oligodendrocyte or Schwann cell. In between the myelin sheath are these empty spaces here and these are called the nodes of Ranvier. You'll talk about their significance more in lecture. Now this right here where you see this nucleus is the cell body, not the cell body, sorry, the the cell membrane of the oligodendrocyte or the Schwann cell and it is called the neurolemma. Okay, so that's the cell membrane, okay, the cell membrane right here D of either that oligodendrocyte or that Schwann cell. Okay. So that's the general anatomy of a neuron. Now what you're looking at here is you are looking at a motor neuron. The short dendrites, the cell body, then the axon. The electrical signal always transfers from the dendrite through the cell body down through the axon. Here's our up close again. Here's our axon hillock. Here's our um, uh, axon. Here is the neurolemma. Here's your myelin sheath. In here, and we went over the rest of these. Okay, so when you look at the anatomy of three different neurons a motor neuron, a sensory neuron, and a interneuron. Now, remember, hopefully, you've done this in lecture already. A sensory in neuron takes information from this peripheral nervous system to the central nervous system. So, what you're going to see is you're going to see a long dendrite. Okay, a long dendrite in the sensory neuron. You're then going to see the cell body and you're going to see a short axon going into the brain or the spinal cord. So our sensory neurons have very long dendrites, a cell body, then an axon. As opposed to the motor neuron we just looked at, which has short dendrites, a cell body, and a long axon. Now interneurons are found only are found only in the central nervous system, in the brain or the spinal cord and you'll see their axons and dendrites are pretty much the same length but do remember the signal still goes dendrite cell body axon in an interneuron the electrical signal goes dendrite cell body axon and then dendrite cell body axon so again there's a little bit of difference here between the look of a 
sensory and a motor neuron. So make sure, and this was in the first video, you know the difference between what they do, how they send information. Sensory goes peripheral to central. Motor goes central out to peripheral. Interneuron is found just in the brain or spinal cord in the central nervous system. And again, you have this difference in the length of the dendrites and the axons. Now, another thing, oops, let me come back here real quick. Let's define the difference between a nerve, a neuron, and a fiber. A neuron is what we've just talked about. It's the functional unit of a, of the brain cell, of a neuron, or of a cell of the nervous system. So here's your example here. A fiber is either the long dendrite or the long axon. So you just had the long extension of a neuron is a nerve fiber. And what a nerve is, it's a bundle of nerve fibers. So again, a neuron is the single cell. A nerve fiber is the extension, whether that extension is a long dendrite or a long axon. And then a nerve, a nerve is a bunch of fibers wrapped together. So you may have a sensory nerve, which contains only sensory neurons. You may have a motor nerve that contains only motor nerves. Or you may have a mixed nerve, which contains both sensory and motor neurons, but the fibers, okay? The nerve is about the fiber, and remember the fiber is either the dendrite or the motor neuron. In the next lab, you'll go through uh, the spinal cord and you'll talk about a mixed nerve. Your spinal nerves are mixed nerve. They contain the dendrites of sensory neurons and the axons of motor neurons wrapped in connective tissue. And again, you'll go through that in your next lab. The next area that we need to cover, and these are difficult to point to on models, so you'll, you'll see me primarily ask you questions. And these are the layers of the meninges. Okay? The meninges is a layer that surrounds the central nervous system, both the brain and the spinal cord. Um, it's there somewhat as a protective mechanism. It helps fluid moving and keep nutrients going throughout the, both the brain and the spinal cord. So you need to know the different layers. The layers you need to know, the first one is the dura mater. Here's the skull. The dura mater is the layer that is attached, okay, that is attached to the skull. Dura meaning tough. Okay. The next layer is the arachnoid mater, which is right here. Arachnoid being, remember spider, fear of spiders is arachnophobia. So arachnoid, the subarachnoid space looks like spider webs. Okay, it looks like spider webs. And what circulates through here is what is called cerebral spinal fluid. And so it circulates around the brain, throughout the brain, and the ventricles, which we'll learn about a little bit later, and then down through the spinal cord and around. It is made and it is recycled. So that's just flowing through around the brain, within the brain, and around the spinal cord. Then you have the pia mater, which is the layer of the meninges that is attached to the brain itself. The sub, or the epidural space, excuse me, epidural space would be up in here. You may hear, hear someone getting an epidural. An epidural is going to be placed in that epidural space, usually lower in, obviously lower in the spinal cord, to either inject medication or to take a uh, to take a sample of the cerebral spinal fluid, possibly to test for meningitis or any other type of infection. So again, that is the meninges. That is the meninges. Dura mater here, epidural space would be up above here. Then you have the arachnoid mater. Then you have the subarachnoid space. Again, cerebral spinal fluid. And the pia mater is the layer of the meninges that's attached to the brain. The danger of meningitis is that you get this inflammation. And if you sprain a wrist or sprain an ankle, it can become swollen and it's not really going to hurt you. But if that happens in the meninges, what happens is there's nowhere for that pressure to go because of your skull. And so it pushes against the brain. It can cause permanent brain damage. Um, it can be a slow bleed that can cause a problem with meningitis, but it can also be a head injury where you have a slow bleed of some uh, blood vessels that have been cut. It may not show up right away, but if they bleed slowly, you can get a subdural hematoma, which is a blood clot, which can actually cause permanent brain damage and death if that happens. So that's why with head injuries, one of the reasons they keep an eye on you um, after, after the injury. 
Okay, the cerebral spinal fluid flows around the brain and around the spinal cord, but it also travels through within the brain in structures called the ventricles. Now you've got a little model, a gray model, and I always call it, call it the bug model. Um, you've got these spaces. So this first space here, which I kind of call the wings of the bug, are the lateral ventricles. And you'll also see that discussed in the video specifically on the brain. So this is the lateral ventricle. There's one on each side. And then when you look at this drawing right here, here's the head of the bug. That head of the bug, kind of with the eye in the middle, is the third ventricle. Okay, is the third ventricle. And then you've got this structure right here that comes through. It's behind this lateral ventricle right here. And that is called the cerebral aqueduct. And then the last structure you have is the fourth ventricle, which is close to that cerebellum that you're going to learn about. So what you can see on the actual brain, when you're looking at a brain model, you can see the lateral ventricle. You can't really see the third ventricle, so I will not ask you the third ventricle on the brain, but I could ask you the name of this ventricle in the ventricle model, those gray models. The cerebral aqueduct you can see in the brain and it will be mentioned in the video and the fourth ventricle you can also see. You can also see on the brain. So be familiar with the ventricles and the cerebral aqueduct both in the brain and on the ventricle model. And again you can't see the third ventricle very well on the brain itself. You can see the area. It's around, if you want to get an idea, it's around that thalamus and hypothalamus area. So again, cerebral um, spinal fluid flows through these as well as around, okay, through the meninges and around the spinal cord. So that's a review of things that are not on other videos. So if you're using this and you have questions, please let me know. If you're in the one class that I'm missing, make sure that you're writing down questions that you can ask me the next week. Um, Okay, so that's all. That pretty much covers everything that's not covered in other videos. Again, please, if you have any questions, let me know through email or talk to me the next time we have lab. Thanks.